Fantastic. The next lady who's going to speak, people come into your lives for different reasons. Sometimes you've grown up with them, sometimes you met them at school. This is a lady who now, four years ago, I think, if I'm right, I interviewed for a job that she then completed better than anybody I've ever seen, that then became a very lasting friendship. This lady has now been in my home with my family. She is truly something special. And tonight, she's going to talk about something that's very important to her and that I think, like Ian had said, is going to be very important to you. These ideas that matter, that you can take with you, that you can do something with, are extremely valuable. And if she's wired and ready for sound, I'd like you to welcome on stage Kyoko Takeyama, Unconsciously Competent. Kyoko, take it away, take it away. If you have ever wondered how Japanese people learn how to write, I'm going to show you a year's worth of learning in just 20 seconds. When we start writing, we practice on these grids. If any of you have studied Japanese, you know that there are many characters. And for each character, there are strokes. And with those strokes, you write them in a sequence. And the first character is A, which are three strokes. One, two, Three. Now, you just have to learn 2,000 more characters, <laughs> and you'll be able to speak and write Japanese. Shodo. Also known as Japanese calligraphy, is the art of writing in Japanese. Just like you would learn how to write in your own languages, that's what we do. We write Japanese. The difference is, is that we Practice with special brushes and ink and paper. And it is a type of philosophy, it is a philosophy of having balance and harmony. You spend years learning how to write, and after you learn, it becomes absolutely natural to you, mechanical. You don't even think about writing. Just like writing in your languages, we learn our professions. Every single day, we go to work, and we do what we do, and we're excellent at it. Except sometimes, we forget how competent we really are, how much we really know what we do passionately every single day. And sometimes we doubt ourselves. Do I really know how to do that? Am I really qualified to say my opinion? Have you ever doubted your capabilities? I know I have. And it turns out that I am guilty of being unconsciously competent. What does it mean to be unconsciously competent? It means that you lack the confidence of your abilities. You don't actually believe that you can do something as great as you actually already do. You don't even see your potential. Maybe perhaps other people see it in you, but you don't see it. And then, sometimes you end up not doing anything about it. You don't even pick up the brush. Start writing, even though it's all inside of you. I joined Toastmasters about two years ago, and when I started my first speech, I made the decision to make the speech, but it took me six months. Yep. And I canceled a couple times, too, that's the truth. I chickened out, and it took me six months to literally get up on stage and get the nerve to do it, and I spent six months analyzing and analyzing and analyzing the perfect speech. It's going to be great. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be perfect. And I freaked myself out. And, uh, but I gave the best speech that I could that day, and, but it was a waste of time. I wasted six months trying to figure out how I was going to deliver the perfect speech. But it was perfect, 
in the essence of what it was that day. Well, shocking statistics. When women apply for jobs, they need to complete. In order for them to apply for a job, they want to. They will only apply if they complete 100% of the requirements that are expected of them for that job. Men, on the other hand, will apply for a job if they qualify the requirements 60%. Do you know what that means? There are a lot of dudes who don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> what it means is that 60% is enough for you to get up and start doing what you already know how to do. The rest you learn how to do as you go. Isn't that right? But we're always wondering and questioning how to do those things. If I had to be 100% ready to give this speech, I would never ever get up on stage. That's the truth. But it has to start somewhere. I was at a meeting about when was it? It was about a month ago. And I'm sitting in this meeting, and people are talking about some idea that I wasn't really following. I didn't understand. So I'm looking over. I'm like, oh my goodness. Do people are really? Is everybody on board? Because I didn't agree. And so, yes, Kyoko. Um. So. I've been listening to what you've been saying, and、um, I really don't want to offend you. I know you've been working on this project for a long time, but I have some different ideas. And I told her my thoughts. Nobody in that meeting spoke up, and I thought I was crazy. I walked out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be kicked off this team, and they're not going to ask me to work with them. Turns out that I was praised for speaking up. I had a good point. I was so nervous that I those ideas weren't going to be accepted. But actually, that was a turning point of my self-doubt. I realized that if I actually speak up and speak from my heart and talk about my expertise, that that will be recognized. That I should value my opinion, and that people will eventually see me and my ideas. For who I, who I am, it was hard because many times I didn't even pick up that brush. I have it all inside of me. I know how to write. You know how to write, but I didn't even try because I was afraid that I would be judged. There are unconsciously competent people all over the place. They don't even know it. And the way that you can detect them are the people that start saying,、um, "I don't want to offend you," or maybe they say, "Can you do it?、Uh, I don't know how well I could do it, but I can try." They start off with doubting themselves. They already set themselves up. And the way that we can help these people is to say, "Hey." Here, take the brush. I know you can do it. Or maybe change and get rid of those negative thoughts that you have because they're not helpful. The reason why I'm up on the stage today is not because I was、uh, ready to be up here. My friend Cormac actually put the brush in my hand, and he said, "You got this. You've been doing it for five years. Go. Another opportunity for you to try." And so I spent the last three weeks freaking out, trying to do the best presentation that I can ever possibly do. But I decided to come up here and say it's okay. I got this. I am competent, and now I'm going towards the direction of becoming consciously competent and talking about that and inspiring other people, especially women, to come up here and talk about the things that they're. Absolutely passionate and experts at. So, 
I'd like for you to reach your hand out like this. And I'm going to place that brush. And I want you to raise the brush up. And as I write Japanese, I want you to imagine that you're writing with me. Now it's your turn to write. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, that's it.